Earlier this year, two former U.S. military veterans were captured and accused of being part of a failed plot as paid mercenaries to overturn the government of Venezuela. It didn't just fail, it failed miserably. Some professional military contractors called it a clown show. It raised a question for us. How does the world of mercenaries work? And where is the line drawn between legitimate military contractors and going Rambo? Lisa Fletcher went to find out. I was helping Venezuelans take back control. This is Luke Denman and Aaron Barry when they became the photo op captures by Venezuelan forces before they even landed on shore. Eight people were reportedly killed in a firefight between the mercenaries and Venezuelan troops. Mercenario profesional de los Estados Unidos. The pair were former U.S. military special forces and working for a company called Silver Corps based in Florida that was hired by a disjointed group composed of Venezuelans with political and military backgrounds and one common goal, to oust the sitting president. Their failure provided a propaganda coup for their intended target, President Nicolas Maduro. Donald Trump. Wait a minute, we've seen this movie before. At a place called the Bay of Pigs. What became known as the Bay of Pigs invasion was a failed landing on the shores of Cuba by a paramilitary force of Cuban exiles to overthrow communist dictator Fidel Castro, covertly financed and directed by the U.S. government. Mr. Castro has said that these were mercenaries. It was one of the worst killings of innocent civilians by U.S. contractors in Iraq. For most Americans, the mention of private military contractors conjures the images of Blackwater Security Consulting. On September 16, 2007, there was a deadly clash in the capital of Baghdad. A team of former U.S. military troops, codenamed Raven 23, were working for the private firm Blackwater, which had been hired by the U.S. government, when they reportedly opened fire on innocent civilians. They claimed self-defense. Why didn't Blackwater follow its own policies? The episode heightened tensions between Iraq and the U.S., and the FBI stepped in to investigate. Four of the contractors were eventually charged. One remains in prison. But Blackwater was just one company doing business. The United States largely contracted out its wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to private companies. At the height of these wars, contractors made up more than 50 percent of the U.S. troops in Iraq and 70 percent in Afghanistan. We've got private military contractors, mercenaries. What is the preferred term? Uh, the biggest difference between hired gun, which is also a mercenary in my opinion, and a contractor or private mil PMC, private military contractor, would be the Venezuela incident. John Tig Tigan was a military contractor, one of six working for the CIA in Benghazi on September 11th, 2012 when Islamic extremist terrorists attacked. On the day we interviewed him, he was taking part in a tactical training competition. It's a place where former military, special operations, police, and current military contractors keep their skills well honed. Can you kind of give us the 101 on private military contractors? Who are they, what they do? You're not mercenaries, you're just contractors, like you hire a contractor to build your pool or something like that. You know, they've been using contractors since uh, the American Revolution. Um, you know, they, George Washington was using them. So, it, you know, they've been around forever. How essential are PMCs to U.S. operations overseas? Critical. Sam Havelock is a former Navy SEAL commander and now runs a website that connects private military contractors to work overseas. When the special operations community or the government is saying, hey, we need to be more of a gray force, we need to blend in globally, what they're saying is they want to continue to have influence globally and project power and democracy, but do it in a way that is a lighter footprint. The reason why contractors or mercenaries have become so popular, even amongst nations with big and great militaries, is they give you plausible deniability. And why is that important? Because we live in an information age where weapons that give you plausible deniability are more important than raw firepower. 
Sean McFate is a former warrior with the 82nd Airborne and then became a private military contractor. Now he's an author and professor at the National Defense University. Some have suggested that military contractors, PMCs, make it possible for policymakers to play both sides of the fence. So they can get up to America and they can say, we've withdrawn, we've pulled back. We don't know anything about this. I understand that. Chris Moyer, or Dutch as he's better known, is a former member of the U.S. Army's elite Delta Force and is now a military contractor. I guess first and foremost, I want my politicians to tell me the truth. I, don't want, I want that for any, everybody. Uh, but two, I, I guess I want my policymakers also to have an out. Now, it doesn't mean we're lying, it doesn't mean we're covering up, but if indeed the public speaks and says, we want all military assets out of X country, okay, then those are out. But can we have some military experienced contractors on board to help continue to train, equip, help this country that is friendly to us. I personally don't see anything wrong with that. Contracting is one of the biggest insecurity trends in the 21st century that nobody's paying attention to. I mean, anybody who wants to rent military force can and can wage war for any reason they want. Billionaire Ross Perot backed a rescue mission in Iran in 1979 to extract two of his employees being held in Iran. That became more Perot fable than fact. The novel and the miniseries were a well-fictionalized version of what happened on the ground. I think that a lot of the very, very wealthy have gotten away with a lot of stuff and there's a lot of arrogance, um, you know, all the way from the Rockefellers to now. And money is part of the problem and solution. Nearly 200,000 veterans leave the service every year. And for the small percentage with special forces training, that unique skill set built on years of training and paid for by the American taxpayer, transition to civilian life when your whole life has been that of an alpha warrior. What's the best part of it? When I got out in 2013, somewhere in there in 2012 or 2013, I thought I was finished with this life. But as soon as I was out, I started missing it. I also missed the challenge of working with whether it's my own people or indigenous forces in support of our policies that help us win whatever fight we're trying to win. I do, I, did, I missed it, so I had to go back and I'm not gonna quit anytime soon. <laughs> the Pentagon spent 160 billion taxpayer dollars on private military contractors between 2007 and 2012. That's four times the entire defense budget of the United Kingdom. And that may only be part of it since more may be spent from black budgets that are kept secret.